Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the Cyberdeck plate for the Raspberry Pi 400. So let's jump into uh, the learn guide. So if folks wanna check out um, this project, it uses the Cyberdeck from Adafruit uh, to create a little expansion plate so you can add breakout boards uh, like this AMG 8833 uh, to your Pi 400. So if you got yourself a Pi 400, check out the Cyberdeck plate. It's a great way to get your Pi accessories to work with it. So I created this mounting plate and the thing with the mounting plate is that it has these two rails where you can attach uh, these extra breakout boards. And it's really easy to plug them in with this Stemma QT cable. So in Fusion 360, I have this set up and I needed to make it so that it could be 3D printed laser cut or CNC milled. I originally designed it so that it was pretty long and my printer is bigger than my CNC mill. So I needed to make it so that I could change the length of the plate so that it would fit my CNC machine. So let's take a look at the user parameters that I have set up. So I have this one called slot length and this is going to change the length of the slot here. So if I change this to something bigger, you can see that it dynamically updates. I just added 800, which is way too long. That shouldn't be physically possible, but you can do it and, and Fusion doesn't care. It's just like, yeah, whatever, that's the number you want. Let me go to 80. That's a little bit more of what the 3D printed version was. It was around 80, uh, but it this was too big to fit on my CNC mill. So I was like, all right, well, I gotta make this user, uh, user par parametric. So here I have it set to 46, which fits my CNC machine. Some other things that I changed is like the mounting holes. So if I wanted to change the diameter of the slot, make it four, that changes as well. As well. If I wanted to use different material thickness, let's say I don't want it to be three millimeters. Maybe I have a uh, something a little bit thicker, like six millimeters, the design updates too. So those are kind of the main things that I wanted to be able to change is the thickness of the plate, the length of the slot and the diameters of the mounting holes and the slot. So if I hide the electronics here, you can see how um, it's kind of built. And I'll also go into uh, the component and show kind of the sketch that drives it, right? So here's the sketch that drives it. You can see I have some fixed numbers. The fixed numbers are really the distances between these mounting holes. So let's take a look at the learn guide for the Cyberdeck hardware and then see uh, the screenshot here from EagleCAD. So instead of like downloading EagleCAD and opening it up and all that, I just want to show you the screenshot so you can look at the dimensions that uh, that are set here. So you see there's four mounting holes. I'm rolling over them with the cursor. And there are some dimensions that are set here. So you can see the, the distance between these two mounting holes going on the up and down y-axis is 49. And then the distance between these two mounting holes going on the x-axis is around 58. I'm going to round it up to 58. So that's what they are. You also get the hole diameter here, but I actually made my plate a little bit bigger so that I can fit M3 holes or whatever. Uh, so that's, those are the numbers. Those are the fixed numbers that we have to work around in order to make our mounting plate fit our hardware. So let's jump back into Fusion and then use, that, uh, use those numbers. Again, 58 across and 49 up and down. So let's, let's do that. So let me create a new sketch. I'll hide uh, my bodies. I'm in my component. I'll just draw it here on the front plane. So I got to start with a rectangle. So I got my rectangle tool using the R key for the hot. The hot key is R on your keyboard. And I'll just draw uh, something like this. But I won't actually click yet. I want to add those numbers. So again, the, the up and down was 49. And the, uh, the left and right horizontal is 58. So uh, those are locked in. You can hit tab to switch between those two dimensions and then to accept it or append it, hit the enter key. And there we go. Cool, now those are the distances between those mounting holes. So I'm gonna use a circle tool to create those mounting holes. And instead of drawing, um, I'm gonna draw directly on top of this corner here. And that little square lets me know that it's gonna be coincidentally constrained to it. So whenever I move this square, the circle will move with it because it's gonna be kind of locked to this corner. So I'll click. And then instead of just clicking away, I need to add the number. So I already have my user parameter set up for the mounting holes and I called it M holes. So you can just type it out and then use the arrow keys to pull out which one I want. It's the M holes. So I will accept that. Sweet. So now I have one mounting hole. I'm just gonna drag this up here so I can see it better. And we need to create uh, three more of these, right? So instead of creating three manually, 
uh, I can show you all how to use the mirror command to kind of mirror this to this other side and to mirror these two that would that will eventually be here and then mirroring it down. So I use construction lines uh, to create a midpoint uh, between any two of these perpendicular lines. So I'll start with the top here. So I'll grab a line tool and as I roll over my cursor, I get this triangle and the triangle lets me know that, that is the middle of that line. And if I click on that, it's now going to do two things. As I move it, as I move this line, notice what happens when I get a straight line. I get that little icon up there, right here, and it looks like a square, right? That lets me know that that is going to apply a perpendicular constraint. And that's what I want. I want these two lines to be perpendicular. I'm not going to click yet because you can do something a little bit intuitive here. So if I start to roll over this line, Fusion thinks about it and says, hey, you're going to eventually hit, boom, right there, that midpoint line. That is where I want the second line to be. So I'm going to start to move. And, and notice that Fusion is now creating these dotted lines. It's not going to create a line, but it's just telling me that, hey, you are it's guiding me to be as straight as possible. And as I keep going, I'm going to keep going until I hit that perpendicular constraint that we chatted about at the above there. So that's where I want it to be, right? right there. Click. And now I can make this new line, follow that dotted line, and then I'll, I'll end it up here where that midpoint triangle is. So I'll click there. And now what Fusion has done is applied four of the, maybe even five, five of these, maybe even six, <laughs> a, bunch of, uh, uh, a bunch of constraints that make this uh, exactly what we want. So this line has a, well, rather this dot here, this, this, this point has a midpoint constraint to this line and it has a perpendicular, the line is perpendicular with this line. Basically the same thing up here. We're in the middle of this line and we're perpendicularly constrained to it. So with that, now I can use um, these lines to, to, to be mirrors. I can use them to mirror this, this circle here. So I got the circle, I, I selected it. I'll bring up my sketch shortcuts with the S key and now I can use a mirror. So with that selected, I can uh, select this here, the mirror line, and then I need to select this line as the mirror line. You get a little preview here, lets you know that that's what it's gonna be. And that's exactly where I want it, so hit okay. Now that that's set up, I can create another mirror. Let's do a mirror and then select these two circles. Doesn't matter which order you do them. And then we need to select our mirror line. It'll be this one here going uh, horizontally. And then you can see that there is where our lines are gonna be, our circles. Excellent, so I'll hit okay. So now we have our, our setup kind of baseline for creating our mounting plate. So be the next things we need to do to wrap this up is really to, uh, you see how I'm clicking around and you can, these are entities inside your profile, inside your sketch, and these can be used to extrude things, extrude shapes, but we actually don't want these lines to be regular lines. We want to turn them into construction lines so that they don't intersect um, our shapes. Because right now, like if I wanted to select a circle, I'd have to select both of these entities here by holding down shift. So to clean that up, we can double click on any one of these lines and it'll select the whole rectangle. And then what you can do is you can hit the X key on your keyboard, which is the hot key for construction line. You can turn any line into a construction line and any construction line back into a regular line by just hitting the X key once it's selected. So now I have these two lines here that I also want to turn into construction lines. I held down shift to select both of them and then hit the X key and then bam. There's also a line type here, options in the sketch palette. And that's the construction line. You can turn it off or on, toggle on or off. So there you go. So now you can see that there's nothing. I can't select anything in here because that's what we want. You can only select these circles, which is uh, the behavior that we want. Excellent. So then to kind of create the plate, I'll use another rectangle and then I'll draw uh, the rectangle kind of encompassing all this stuff inside. So I'll start somewhere over here and somewhere over here. Now I don't want it to be, I, don't, I didn't add any dimensions because I want this to be uh, kind of parametric. The, the only hard-coded uh, dimensions that I have here is the holes because those are relative to the hardware. They're not going to change. The plate will change. So what I need to do is I need to create some dimensions that will define some distance between these, uh, these construction lines. So I can hold down Shift, select these two lines, create uh, a, 
uh, a dimension by hitting uh, the D key on my keyboard. Now I can say, let's say I want this to be five millimeters, okay? Now I can do that to the other side here. So I can say this right here should be five millimeters away from this one. Cool, so I got that set up, excellent. So now the only thing I need to change is, uh, is to make this corner kind of be the same. But instead of adding five here and then five here again, I can just create some construction lines that will create a, um, a midpoint constraint uh, connecting these two lines together, or these two lines, yeah, connecting these two together with a line in between them two. So pretty much kind of how we, we, we built this construction line that creates a midpoint constraints. We're gonna do the same, but uh, to these two edges here. So here's what I'll do. I wanna create a line that will connect to the middle of this. So I can roll over this line and I get my midpoint constraint. So click there. And then I'll roll over this line and do kind of similar and then uh, click that. So now those two are connected. And, and then all I have to do to kind of shift this into place is to tell this line to be horizontally or vertically constrained. This is gonna be a vertically constrained one. So pull up the S key. I have this in my, in my, uh, my shortcuts. So I'll just click that and it squares it out. Sweet. So now we just need to do it uh, to either this side or this side. I'm going to do it to this side because it seems a little bit cleaner. So again, bring my line tool, roll over, get that triangle, click, do the same to this line, roll over, get the triangle, click. And you can see that they're there. And now all I need to do is click on that line and then say, hey, you need to be horizontally constrained or vertically constrained. And there it is. So now we have, so now this edge over here, let me move this, this right here, these two lines now have five millimeters. You can see the distance there. And then same thing here, five millimeters away. Well, why is that? Well, it's because we created these lines that have uh, those two constraints. They're horizontally constrained and yet they still have midpoint constraints across those two. And that's what allows this thing to be squared um, around all the edges. So now I can select these and uh, do some construction line work here and then just uh, make them construction lines. Sweet. Sweet, so that helps you um, just use the least amount of um, sketch dimensions. Um, it kind of it kind of optimizes this a bit so you don't have so many of them all over the place. So now you have this whole set, this whole rectangle, you can move it around. And what I like to do is I like to add this to the center uh, sketch origin and that locks it into place. So now everything in the center is perfect and I can use mirrors and things um, if, I, if I need them. So now I wanna build the slot, like the extra piece. I don't, I could use another rectangle, but then I would have like too many lines. Like I don't need that extra line. So I'm just gonna use the line tool to create this, uh, this kind of rectangle. I'm just gonna freeform it out. Let's see this right here. I wanna make that a uh, perpendicular constraint and then right here, cool. So now I have this, uh, this piece here. Now I don't have, a dimension yet. So I'm gonna draw my slot. I'm gonna use a rectangle to draw the slot. I'm just gonna kind of play uh, around. So right here, looks good. Again, no dimensions yet. I do wanna add a dimension to uh, these two lines here, this right here. I'm gonna make this the diameter, or rather the M holes. So it'll have that same diameter. And then I will add some sketch constraints to tell these two edges here to be perpendicular, or rather not perpendicular, just to have some distance between them. So I'll, I'll do three. And then I'll also do this side here. So from here to here will also be three. And then why not do this right here as well? This and that are also three. Sweet. Now this can move around. This, this is, as I move it around, you can see that, oh, okay, these two lines are always gonna be three millimeters away from each other. Same thing with these two lines and these two over here. Cool. Now, how do I apply a parametric, like where should I apply it to? Well, it's up to you. You can either apply it to this piece or the actual line here that creates the slot. So I'm gonna apply it to the actual slot. With it selected, I'll hit the D key, and then here I'll put in the slot length because it's a user parameter we have set up. So you can see it switched back to, it got sh shrunk down because that's the number that we have. And now we can go inside of our user parameters and update this as we want. So you can put 60, you can put 80, and it's gonna keep updating it. 
Now it's it's taking a little bit for Fusion because like I already have a design in the background that's driving that, so that is actually updating. So if I pull up my body, you'll see that oh, it's actually changing that. Uh, maybe I could have used a different one. I could. Let me go back to the user parameters window, create a new parameter, call it new length, and then put 50 in it. Hit OK. Now that I have that, I can hit OK. And then let's update this sketch dimension. Let's change that slot length to new length. And then uh, that's how you can change that out. Pretty simple. All right. So that's pretty much how I crafted this uh, this uh, this plate. Now we can like extrude these two, right? Give it that thickness, use a parameter that we set up, and um, show the bodies because I'm hiding them. And there we go. There's our plate. That's it's very very simple. You can add fillets and all that stuff, which is what I did. But hey, look at that. We can change this now. 60, and that changes super easy. And it's really helpful, especially when you want to translate the design to different mediums or just have different size stock. So. Uh, that's how I got this driven. So uh, with a little bit of extra detail and stuff, you can apply a second one, a second rail, and you can offset it a little bit here uh, with these kind of fun angles. Uh, I have these models available to download if folks want to get the uh, the Cyberdeck model. I have it uh, linked in that learn guide and also the Pi TFT as well. So there you go. That's uh, one of the one of the ways to use user parameters uh, to create these kind of scalable mounting plates. I hope you guys learned something. Let me know what you think. Um, until next one, until the next one, uh, remember to make a coincident day. Bye, folks.